All right, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna explore two options for componentizing your CSS within your JS files. We're gonna start from a common branch, get checkout CSS in JS. So in this branch, we have a basic development setup and we've started a simple React application. It's the same state that we were on at the end of the React hookup episode. So when we run it, we see that we have a clickable counter. When you click it, it increments. All right, now the first kind of CSS we want to get into is the one that comes prepackaged with Webpack's CSS loader. So here in the CSS loader definition, we can add a series of options. We add a query object to give our CSS loader some options. The first option is modules true. Now modules true is all you need. And that'll give you the ability to do something like this. If you wanted to import, so let's take this CSS out of our main.js. We have an unstyled web page now. And instead, let's import that. We'll import styles from main CSS. And the way this works is you still use class name like normal, but now you use styles and then the name of the class you want to import. So in this case, I'm going to say I have a counter class. So down here, if you make a counter, we can give this a change. Like we'll say text decoration underline. And well, now we can see it's pulling in the CSS. Now it's changed the class name to something that looks like a hash. So this is a hash. We can customize this with another option in our Webpack config. Back here in the loader, if we say local ident name, that's capital I, capital N, you can give it sort of a template for what you want it to look like. Local. We'll make sure that rebuilds. And then we reload this, we see that the class name is no longer undecipherable, right? It's main, which is the name of the file, main CSS, and local, which is the class name, counter. That's pretty cool. We can also, for a production environment, give it a hash for caching purposes. And the hash is something like hash. And you can say four if you only want four of the hash numbers. You can say base 64 and then do only eight whatever you want to do. So that's going to look like, it's going to look like this, right? So we have the first eight. You have the best of both worlds. You have the file it comes from, the class itself, and it's cache expiry hash. So this is basically the BIM syntax. If you did something like this, this would be the BIM syntax. And it's very easy to set up using just the CSS loader. There's a second type of CSS in JS package that uses template literals inside your JS files to create scoped CSS in the same way that CSS modules would. It's pretty cool, and I wanted to go into it a bit to finish up this lesson, because this is where I believe the future of CSS is. So there's been a number of packages over the years that have been developing this. The one that's currently on top is called Emotion. So let's npm install Emotion. Now let's npm run dev to get our server started again. Now inside counter.js, we can import CSS from Emotion. And CSS goes inside the brackets. Now right below that, but above the class, let's create a new variable, class name. We'll say it equals CSS. And then we'll put two backticks at the end of CSS. Now this is an ES6 style of writing functions called the template literal. It behaves just like a normal template literal would, where you can include variables using the dollar sign brackets notation. So if we had a variable red, now this CSS function will compile this into a class name and include the CSS in the header. So now we have a class name that we can insert. So let's take out this inline style here. We'll say class name, class name. So now you see, once it reloads, we have a red counter. Cool. You 
need semicolons between each. That's cool. All right. So what does this class name look like? It looks like this, CSS and then the hash. The hash is gonna be the hash of this stuff. So it's not inlining it, it's placing it up here in the head. And these style data motion tags. You can see that we've got So we've got it separated out. So now we can use whatever we want as far as JavaScript goes, loops, variables, other reference files, the database, almost anything. And emotion can go even further than that. Let's say we wanted to use props inside of our CSS. We need a couple more packages for that. So let's npm install react emotion and babel plugin emotion. Right on, now inside of our Babel RC. So let's add that new plugin that we just installed. We're gonna create a new array right after the React Hot Loader Babel. The first element of that array will be a motion. The second element will be an object. It's gonna be source map true and auto label True. All right, now let's get it running again. Inside counter.js, let's import styled from React Emotion. So what React Emotion lets you do is it lets you set up a component name to be used inside of your render function. And it lets you tie your styles directly to that component. Let's do an example here. Let's say we want to create something called fancy. It's a fancy component. We'll create it by calling styled. And that's just a function. It's going to take a string, which is the name of the element that you want to create, in this case an h1. At the end of that, it's going to take the template literal backticks. So now we can put our CSS in here. We can say color hot pink. So now we have a component here that we can render just like anything else. So instead of the H1, let's say fancy. And we'll take out the class name. It kind of cleans it up a bit, doesn't it? All right, so now you see the hot pink from right here. The semantics are a lot cleaner. Still works the normal way. So what does this thing look like? It looks like this. We see the style for hot pink but you can also use props inside your emotion components, if you will. So let's say we wanted to set this up so it changes color every time I click the button. And it's one color if it's odd or another color if it's even. So that's pretty easy to set up. So inside of our styled, instead of using just hot pink, we'll create a space for JavaScript. And we'll say props, I do a fat arrow function. So we can say props.wild. If that's true, it's going to be hot pink. If it's not, it's going to be gold. So you can see already it's changed to gold because props.wild is not there. It's, it's false. Of course, you can set it. You can say wild. It goes back to hot pink. Pretty crazy. So now what if we want to click and change this? So in the return function above here, let's just say is wild. And is wild is going to be equal to this state count modulus 2 equals zero. Now, if this number modulus two equals zero, that's synonymous with this is even. And if it doesn't equal zero, it's gonna be odd. So this is a simple way to determine if this is an odd or even number in the count. Now we put is wild as the value of wild. It reloads. And now when we click this, we go back and forth between gold and hot pink, switching this class information right here, back and forth, back and forth. So in the header, it's going to define both colors and it's just gonna to switch to the CSS class every time I click it. It's gonna switch it on the class itself. It's a pretty cool way to do it. All right, so using this setup, you can see there's a lot of places for optimization. You can have any props affect any style you put in here. And you can have them animate that way. You can have a lot of things happen. So we have more chances for customization in our CSS. 
and in production, this stuff is going to be bundled into a separate CSS file, so there's not a lot of inlining. There's just these class names. And even though they render out uh, with long class names here, it doesn't pollute your source code. Your source code can be very semantic. All right, so in this episode, we introduced two ways to do CSS and JavaScript. We used CSS modules, which are just options on the CSS loader itself, um, naming the classes in such a way. The other one required a little more setup, but not too bad. It was the emotion package. We added it to our plugins and imported it from Emotion and then set up these really nicely semantically named CSS wrappers around our function. If you need to catch up, get check out CSS in JS final. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.